Walter over calls here. You're welcome indeed to another edition of the program. Now, don't forget later on, we're crossing over once again to join Martin Logan, who's out and about with the Irish community right across the UK. Well, we're here in the town of Ballina for a very, very special event. It's to commemorate the always forgotten famine orphan girls who were sent to Australia. And the special commemoration is taking place here in the town to mark the occasion. And they would still be forgotten only for the dedication and the hard work and persistence of one man. Well, I first discovered orphan girls, Henry, and there were Presbyterian orphan girls from this town who were sent to Canada in the 1860s. 54 of them went, and I was intrigued by this. And I started to explore and find and research. And I stumbled across the orphan girls sent to Australia uh, a number of years before that, 1840, 1850. And there were 137 from the four work houses of Mayo. And I thought that was amazing. I had never heard of it, never come across the school history or anything else. So I started exploring, and of course, I went to the Irish Famine Memorial site in Sydney. And they have the full database of 4,114 orphan girls, including the 137 Mayo girls. And believe it or not, today, Henry, those 414 orphan girls, 4,114 orphan girls, have 2 million descendants in Australia. The population of Australia is 24 million. So that's what, one twelfth of it? That's a lot of, a lot of pedigree there. And uh, you know, research is the nicest part of anything. Writing a book is a pain, to be perfectly honest. When you get published, people say, you must be delighted. No, you're not, you're utterly relieved. When I was doing the research, uh, a Larry Thompson in Australia contacted me. And he said his great-great-grandmother was from Mayo, and she thought she was from Crossmine. He'd come to Crossmine to try and find their roots. He couldn't find them. The trouble was he was looking in the wrong place. He should have been looking in Dromardown, in the Eastie direction, where Mary uh, Jane Nealis, or sorry, Winifred Jane Nealis was born. And that's the central character of my book. I eventually found her through the UNESCO Heritage Centre and the Heritage Centre in Sligo. And they were to pin her down. And I was able to tell Laurie where his great-great-grandmother, their sisters, their parents and their brothers were christened and born. And he said, you have made my life for me. He's now 90 years of age and his name is uh, one of the quilts uh, patches. He has done one of the patches for the quilts. A remarkable guy, Laurie Thompson. And, uh, Funny enough, we use the term forgotten orphan girls. Actually, the only orphan girls remembered because the documentation was there of the shipping records. I'm not the only researcher in this field. A lot of other people research in this field. But it appealed to me, and uh, the more I looked, the more interest I got. And I, this research is continuing, and every day I make a new contact or someone has contacted me. We decided they deserved a memorial. The famine deserved a moment. The, this monument is more than the famine girls. It's all the Mayo victims of the famine. And we make that quite clear. And it says that on the plate here. And uh, we thought it was time we honour them. We give them a life. And the figure of the girl gives a symbolism that people are going to identify with rather than research statistics and old dates and things like that, which don't turn people towards the subject. But we think the figure of the girl will do that. And the statue has been donated by Frank Cairns, a businessman who was very kind to us and couldn't make it today actually, but uh, we have his best thoughts and wishes. And we had a great turnout here today, upstairs in the library, and uh, beautiful music by you know the choir and the Fox of Bass Band, and the whole thing came together beautifully. And the credit of all of that is the people of the community.
here uh, because uh, I knew this was coming up and they asked me could they use our and I said, of course, I'd be honored. And then um, I met up with the wonderful choral director, uh, Gina Deasy, and uh, she took such care with the song. And I don't know how many uh, secondary school girls from St. Mary's and Canada were up there, maybe 40 or so. And it was just brilliant. The sound so moving. Only two of them did the alternative on the solo parts and the lower part of the note. So it was very moving. And then they did the Race Me Up as well. So I was well represented along with the Irish and the Australian national anthem. So it's wonderful to come to a live thing like this and hear the song. I had the original folio of Orphan Girl, the song book and folio of Orphan Girl from Australia with pictures of the launch of the, the CD there and the speech and Mary uh, Macaulay's was in it and the premiere of New South Wales was a descendant of an Orphan Girl. So I thought that might be nice to give that to the school and then I had a couple of copies of the special 10th anniversary edition of the Raise Me Up Machine Cleaning, so I signed the copy and gave that to them as well, and obviously one for the choral director. So. But then I was presented with a fabulous picture of the scene, Irish, I think in Australia, with some of the lyrics in the melody on it. Um, by, and, and I haven't met the lady yet, so if you're out there, Patricia Slow, I was totally knocked out and surprised. I will find you and uh, thank you properly. And so it's, it's gorgeous, totally gorgeous. Well, it's time for us to take a commercial break. Don't go away, we have lots more to come in part two from Ballina. So we'll see you in a couple of minutes.